Um, so first of all, my name is Renee Condrat. I am with Calumet Welding Center and Calumet Testing Services. So we actually started our company, Calumet Testing Services, in 1978 by the first owners. Um, they started off doing non-destructive testing and destructive testing as well as um, welding consultation and uh, welding procedure writing for uh, and welding certifications for a lot of the uh, construction uh, manufacturing industries in Northwest Indiana and Chicagoland area. Um, we were actually among the first American Welding Society accredited testing facilities that happened in 1990. So we've been an accredited testing facility for over 24 years. Um, and then the accredited testing facility originally started off as about six to eight, depending on the day, uh, welding booths in our back of our uh, non-destructive testing facility. It was a very small testing facility for a very long time. And then basically what happened is around, two th this is a picture of the outside of our, our one building, but around 2005, uh, a lot of phone calls were coming in for the accredited testing facility services for people that wanted to get certified that had a lacking of general welding knowledge or the fact that there were certification standards available that they were actually going to be tested to. Some of them thought it was a written test. Um, some of them, they didn't know the name of the process that they were welding in. They had no idea that there were actually standards that they were going to need to be passing in order to become a certified welder. Uh, we kind of thought this had a lot to do with um, the upcoming welder shortage, where welding was being removed out of the high school education programs, um, a lot of the local uh, community colleges were having a harder and harder time keeping up with material costs as carbon steel prices were rising. So uh, it became obvious to our area that there was going to be a little bit of a demand for a welding education program in our, in our immediate area. Also, we, are you guys familiar with the BP Whiting uh, Refinery Expansion Project? Just the Northwest Indiana thing. You guys do know about that? Okay. So we were the immediate local accredited testing facility for that, and obviously our six to eight welding booths wasn't going to cut that couple billion dollar expansion project. So we needed more space. And that is where I stepped into the picture in 2008. It was my first job outside of college, and um, I was assigned with the monumental task of actually building a building and then opening a school. Um, so this is what we did. The first lot, which is cool, we have this little... This is our first building, and then we put a building on the back of our lot with an actual classroom. Um, we started with 36 gigantic welding booths. They were very spacious, um, which we ultimately had to upgrade into 42 welding booths because that wasn't even enough for what was happening in our area at that time. Um, we also we included a plasma, uh, plasma cutting room and arc gouging room with our facility because it was obvious that welders that knew how to join steel together would need to be able to remove some defective welds as well. So we put that all in its own room that had a cinder block to keep all the sound away from all the extra training that was going on. And then we had a fume extraction system installed that had hexavalent chromium filters or filtration uh, capabilities. I hope maybe some of you know what that is, some of you don't know what that is. Uh, but it is the upcoming uh, concerns that people are starting to have or already have, but we're seeing it more and more. Um, BP gets into hexavalent, or they get into chromium materials a lot. So with that being our market, that was kind of a, a major concern with our, with our building. So we installed a $500,000 filtration equipment. Um, the whole project cost us $2 million, which is a pretty big uh, chunk of money for my father, who <laughs> owns it. Um, but ultimately, it led to a huge, huge expansion. Um, and BP, actually, they were so eager to, uh, they have their own welding training department. They were so eager to get into our building. They started their training in our building before it was completely constructed. So we didn't have bathrooms yet. We didn't have classrooms or anything. Um, but they needed to be in our, our space faster, so we just opened up the shop doors and, and let them in. In early 2009, and then the official construction was done at the end of 2009. Uh, let me move on with my notes here. So what happened to us in northwest Indiana Chicagoland area, let's go right, oh that's uh, pictures of our, our booths and how big they are, you can see you can easily fit four people in there to uh, watch demonstrations and then that blue thing is our fume extraction system, it is a UAS system which we are uh, really proud of, so we think it's uh, one of the coolest systems that we were able to come across out there, so if you want my recommendation, UAS is the way to go. Um, so we can fit four people in there plus the instructor, I think that's him right there, uh, giving instructions on the stuff. 
Um, it's brand new, bright, shiny, uh, awesome looking. It's not dirty yet. So um, we're really proud of our, of our new expanded facility. Um, but in 2012, that's when the BP Whiting um, expansion project was at its peak. And we actually ended up having to run over 5,500 certification tests in our building alone. That's not counting all the certification tests that were mailed into our facility from, uh, not mailed, they were delivered, so by truck. Somebody dropped them off for processing to certify all of the welders that were used for this uh, multi-billion dollar expansion project that happened in Whiting. So thank God we put in all those booths. We would have never been able to handle that capacity with about eight welding booths. Um, and then that 5,500 was not the predicted number. It was something where because of the welder shortage, that is really what it ended up being. There were so many people that were failing. They were importing welders from the entire country. All of the welders in our area were kind of working on this project. So it left our school environment with a really unique situation um, where we actually had a lot more job opportunities for our students because all of the welders were being, uh, being used for this project in our area. A lot of union jobs even, they couldn't, they couldn't fill up the capacity for what was going on in Northwest Indiana. It was kind of a really um, awesome situation to be a part of, especially for a brand new school. Um, we also, in 2012, uh, we were nominated for Practical Welding Today's, the first instructor of the year. So that's one of our claims to fame, and that's our instructor. Uh, his name is Jamie Shaker. I don't know if you all saw the magazine. And it's kind of a cool feature, um, but it also led to another issue that we had where we were oversold, sorry, we were oversold with our, our education program. Uh, we were about booked seven month wait list for 2012, 2013, so we stopped running advertisements and everything. So if you guys haven't heard about us, that would be the reason why we were at capacity. <laughs> um, and then um, we actually expanded our certification department to handle all of the extra demand. We had to employ two additional full-time staff. Uh, to do the actual welder certifications, 5,000 people is a, a big number. And then we also have a lot of welding procedures that come through our facility as well. So we expanded. Um, these are some of our big name contractors that we work with. Um, some of them are, are national, so you might have heard of some of these places. And kind of the upcoming trend for the future of what uh, we're anticipating is uh, some of these places have been spoiled with, with our awesome training facility, with the new shininess. and. Uh, the cleanliness and just uh, how efficient we run things. Um, so they have been reporting back to us when they go to different areas of the country and they're not satisfied with the uh, testing facility that's going on there. They're actually shipping welders to our facility to test them in the mass quantities and then uh, shipping them back out to the construction site. So that's kind of an upcoming trend for our, our future expansion. Um, so how do we make all of this work? How do we tie all of this into um, what we're doing. Uh, the majority of our certifications as an accredited testing facility, the majority is actually done for corporate clients like this. Um, we don't actually do a whole lot of public certifications and that's, um, we do about 10 to 12 public certifications a year. So these are some, some statistics for you. We actually graduate about 50 or so students every year that come out certified either AWS certifications or ASME certifications. We do multiple codes, which I'm, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute here. Let me check my timing, make sure I'm not. I'm okay? Awesome. Okay. Um, we do about 10 to 12 public students every year, and I'm going to touch base on that in just a minute here. That's a very small number when you consider the big picture, um, and that's just something we, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. We do API at our facility, American Petroleum Institute. I don't know if you're, if you're all aware of that. Um, those are some of the, the cooler welders. I have some pictures in a minute. That, that's phenomenal to watch. <laughs> so um, we do about 150 plus, uh, plus or minus every year of those types of certifications. Um, we do over, we witness over 100 welding procedures every year. AWS, ASME, any standard that is uh, happening in our area, we're more than willing to witness the certification. Record all the variables and write your welding procedure for you. Um, and that's not including all the procedures that are pre-qualified that we go ahead and, and write for people as well. Um, and those are how many we witness. And then uh, we do thousands of certifications every year. Um, so it's, I could give you numbers, but everything's really skewed with the 2012 5,000 welders. It's not normally that many. Um, so it's just the average isn't going to really be effective in describing what we're talking about here. So uh, this is one of our code libraries. This is the one of our major secrets to success. We just have every code that you can uh, possibly imagine, and if we don't have it, then we will buy it because the 
Rule of thumb is if you need it, uh, probably someone else in the next five days is going to need the same code. Um, so everyone's kind of ends up testing on the same things over and over again. So this is one of our code libraries. We have a couple more, but I don't want to bore you with pictures of books, so we'll move on. And then um, talking about kind of how we are able to intertwine multiple, uh, multiple welding codes into our certification process, ASME. Um, the main thing that they need is to have a company representative, representative there to uh, maintain control of the tasks, which means they want to witness the tasks, they want to witness the processing. So basically a company sends in their own inspector, uses our facility, and then um, they pay us to do that, which is kind of awesome. Uh, so they have their own representative watching the test, walking through the test, and then watching and monitoring all the processing. Um, and some of the key points of why they like to use our facility, we can test their people in bulk. So they can have one major welding inspector uh, monitoring between 26 to 30 people all at the same time. Um, and then the lab results are, are actually done in the building next door about 10 feet away. So they can do multiple things at the same time, which is very effective for them. Um, we get quick results. Uh, we do everything very, very quickly at our company. Uh, the welding industry, as I'm sure you're aware, operates in a state of emergency all the time. So we do, <laughs> we do our, our processing very, very quickly. And some of these companies, they're running multiple tests all in the same day. So they need to do a GTAW test, a GTSM test, and an SMAW test. And then they also need to do it on uh, carbon steel, stainless steel, and ink canal, all in the same day or in a two-day span. So what we're able to do with our very quick processing is give them results on their first test within a couple hours, within an hour sometimes. Um, so they'll know if that guy failed that test or girl, whichever. Um, they'll know if that guy or girl failed that test within an hour so they can cut the test off and stop testing them on the further stuff. Um, so that's one of the benefits of, of using our facility. Um, second opinions, if they need it. Uh, a lot of these inspectors have a lot of experience throughout the world. They don't really need it. Um, but sometimes there's an argument. <laughs> um, we're there to kind of uh, be the second eyes to go over the material um, with our CWIs that are there on staff at all, all, at all times. We'll just go over it and be like, we've seen some stuff pass like this before, or no, I've never seen anything like this pass before. So it's, it's up to them ultimately, but if they want second opinions, we are there to give them. Um, skipping along here. Um, we also do um, ABS certification, so American Bureau of Shipping happens at our facility too. Again, uh, this test, they require an ABS member uh, to come and witness the test and maintain control of that test as well. So they want to witness the actual test themselves and be there for the processing to physically witness the specimens, not just the x-rays afterwards. They want to view the specimens. So basically we have a chair and a cup of coffee and that's how uh, easily that one works out. <laughs> um, API, as I mentioned, these are, these are one of the cooler ones. Um, so you'll see the picture in just a minute. But uh, they test using their mobile welding units. So we provide these gentlemen with some parking lot space. They bring in their gigantic trucks. Um, some of them test one at a time. It, it's really kind of cool when they have about four or five of them testing across our parking lot all at the same time. Um, they need a CWI to uh, witness the test and record all the variables and, and document uh, various things. So we actually have nine CWIs on staff. So that's not really a big issue for us. And then these people, they have to renew their certifications annually, and they actually need to renew them per company. So we end up seeing, I don't know if it's the same five guys. It seems like the same five guys over and over and over. <laughs> um, but we end up seeing the same welders over and over again throughout the year as they're qualifying for their different contractors and renewing their certifications. Uh, so these are some of the pictures. Um, and these, are, it's just anytime these guys are around, uh, we get a big gathering of people that just kind of want to watch it. I like to kind of compare it to like little kids watching a fire truck. Like <laughs> it seems really cool. You don't get to see it very often, um, but that's kind of what what, uh, what happens when these gentlemen come in. Um, these ones, I think they're they're doing just a general six inch pipe, and then down here we have one of the bigger ones uh, with a the pancake welding helmet. So, um, so they are some of the some of the elite welders, some hardcore guys that weld out in the fields. Um, the American Welding Society, and this is uh, one of our favorites, obviously. <laughs> um, but this is the, the bulk of why we have so much certifications happening, even in multiple different codes that happen out there. Um, so our experience with the being an accredited testing facility with the American Welding Society, um, some of our customers, they want to have bragging rights about being or having all their welders AWS certified. So that's why they come to our facility initially. Some of them, they've started a job or started bidding on a job, and then their contractor will request that they have an AWS certification. So 
They go on the AWS, uh, AWS website. We're one of the closest ones nearby, so that's how we in, uh, get into their business. Um, and even if the customers aren't taking advantage of the AWS card, they're still, this is still generating business for us. So even if they don't mail that in, they're still coming to our facility because we're an AWS accredited testing facility. That's probably also why we get a lot of the ASME work and API work is just because we're a very reputable testing facility in Northwest Indiana, Chicagoland area. So our name is, is kind of on everyone's lips basically uh, when it comes to certifications. So if you were thinking about becoming a testing facility, we, are, we recommend it a lot. Um, Another thing I was, I was kind of thinking about yesterday, I was really motivated when I left here. I, had, I learned a lot yesterday. So I went home and kind of threw in a couple extra slides of, of what can I contribute to make other people learn from my experiences. So um, I wanted to kind of briefly touch base on uh, public integrity. As I mentioned before, the 2005 situation where um, people aren't necessarily aware that there are certifications, especially if they're coming from a totally different industry. They're not aware of the actual standards that they need to be passing in order to get certified. Um, so when you do open an accredited testing facility, you are going to face a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about that want to come take a written certification test for becoming a welder. So um, we feel that it's really important as a business not to take their money, um, that it's important to kind of talk them out of taking a certification test, go into schooling, uh, get trained either through us or somewhere else, but don't take a test that you're not ready to test on um, because ultimately um, a certification can only take you so far. If you don't have the actual skill set to back that up when you get onto the job site, you're not going to keep your job. And that's ultimately why people want to be certified is to work. And they don't really want the bragging rights, but they want to be able to work. So if they don't have the skill set to back that up, you're really not doing them any favors by taking their money, giving them the test. And if they accidentally pass it, which is you know, kind of hard to do. Uh, but if they accidentally pass it, they get on that job site. If they don't have that skill set to back it up, they're immediately getting kicked back off that job site. So just a, a little advice about public integrity of working with the general public that doesn't really know what they're getting themselves into. Um, other advice, um, and this goes along with what David was bringing up uh, yesterday. Um, we have the bragging points of our amazing job placement assistance program. So if you aren't doing job placement assistance, these are some great tips for getting that started. And I want to kind of uh, explain why I think that is so important. Um, so I keep a database of every company that I ever come into contact with in our area, exactly what they do. And um, I send resumes to uh, each of those companies, whether they're hiring or not. <laughs> and that's how most of our students get jobs. So we have about 50 students. Uh, graduating every year, and just about 50 of them get a job through me, specifically. If they don't get a job through me, they find a job on their own. Um, and then I also add that to my, my database and contact that company in the future. So anybody that does a job posting, it's real simple. Just add them to your database and then send a resume to them as you have someone that meets, meets their qualifications. Anytime you have a student get their own job, add that to your database too. And then uh, one of the secret sauces that we have is the yellowpages.com, the former phone book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A lot of our 18-year-old students have no idea what a, a phone book is anymore. So, <laughs> um, so yellowpages.com, that's, that's where we go. Any company that does welding uh, within 20 minutes of our facility, uh, at one time or another, I'm going to be contacting them, see if they're union, non-union, see if they can hire our students, uh, if they'll be open to receiving our resumes, and what they do. And why that is so important is exactly what David was saying, is um, find out what your market is in your area and adjust your curriculum accordingly. So um, basically, find out what they're going to be testing their people on and send them your resumes. What we learned from this uh, back in 2008, 2009, as I mentioned, my first job, um, we, <laughs> uh, we were kind of naive and a little bit overly cocky when we got into this industry. We were like, oh, we have the newest, shiniest facility. You know, we've been doing certifications for so long. Uh, we already know that everybody does stick welding, and that's all they do because that's really the most, uh, most that we certify on. So we, we made that mistake. Um, so we started off with really just a stick welting course. Um, and then ultimately, as we're doing the job placement, that's when we started to realize that it was a lot more than stick welting <laughs> going on in our area. So to keep people from doing that problem, I recommend that you do job placement assistance. That's when we realized that if you're just a stick welder and you don't have the flux core and TIG combination that the employer is looking for, you really just kind of set your student up for failure. Um, if you're not doing the MIG, TIG, flux core combination, there's all these different combinations that these companies are doing. And if they have it, they get the job because the other people don't have that combination. So job placement assistance is one of the best ways to kind of set your students and your school up for success. Um, it's also a situation that kind of has a, uh, I'm going to go into a little interconnectivity speech in just a minute here, but it has kind of a domino effect. 
five minutes. I think I'm almost done, so I think I'm okay. Um, it has a kind of a domino effect. So we actually had six students in the last two weeks get into the 597 local pipe fitter hall all at one time, which is, they only took about 85 people, so we were really proud. But I had already found those six students' jobs, so two weeks ago, six new job openings <laughs> happened, and then the future students just got moved right into those positions. So it's an ongoing effect as people move up and move out of those positions. You just keep get to pumping the same students into the same jobs, and they're getting their, their career started. So um, I think that was, oh, and we also had one student where they had to decide whether they wanted to work at Arsler Middle or be a 597 pipe fitter. So talk about having a really cool decision to make. <laughs> it was kind of stressful for him, but. Ultimately, that's uh, one of our bragging points about our job placement assistance. Um, and then we were able to really quickly adjust our, our courses accordingly. So we just uh, basically added the other processes in there um, by doing this research and finding out what these employers were looking for. We found out that we weren't offering pipe layout for welders and fitters, which is another thing they were looking for. So add that in there, uh, increase the length, and we were able to have a very fast turnaround, which is your, because that's exactly what these employers want. You need to give the employers what they want in order to get your students what they want. Um, so, uh, sorry, that was my, my cool picture about that. And then uh, my input on the welder shortage conversation, um, we are reminding our students that it is a competition out there. Um, so it's not just enough to show up and, and pass the test, that there is, these are two pictures of our, oh no, I, I turned it off. Uh, so two pictures of our student body. So this one is from December, this one's from the summer. Basically, there's another group of welders coming into the job market right after you. So you need to be the best that you can possibly be as quickly as you can get there. If you're not doing your homework, if you're not doing the reading, then it is something where the next guy is going to step in and do that reading and do that homework. He's going to work harder than you because he wants to feed his kids just as much as you want to feed your kids. So as much as there is a welder shortage, we like to remind them that it is a competition, that there's multiple schools producing multiple levels of welding skill set, and that you need to be ready to be competitive out there. And now I find out we need to be competitive against Korea, too. So <laughs> I'll take that one home and start upping our game even further. And then finally, this works because of how much interconnectivity we have. The BP Space Rental contract, they actually um, finance a lot of the overhead of our building to help us keep the prices down to the general public. We don't take um, financial aid and FAFSA and student loans, so our students are strictly out of pocket, which is kind of difficult, but we try to keep our costs low. We use all the recertification pieces for practice time for our students. So those 5,500 weld tests, we just turned them around and the students were practicing on them almost as quickly as they were processed and, and over with. Our NDT, NDE, our non-destructive testing, um, those certifications lead to new employers for our students. Anytime that they're testing anybody that fails a test, I'm sending them a resume of someone that actually can pass that test. And then um, new employer or new employees lead to more non-destructive testing and um, um, and certifications. So as these guys get hired, the customers end up sending their pieces back for certifications as well as having our facility go out to their job sites um, to do the inspections of their welds. So it's all interconnected to kind of help our business um, expand and have a real stronghold in Northwest Indiana, Chicagoland area. So this is probably the main thing that has helped our small company of about 20 to 30 welding inspectors compete against the global um, and then international different types of competition that's out there. So becoming an accredited testing facility really gave us a, a competitive edge. Great. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>